What we're going to do now is show you how to make your appliances like this projector or in fact just about anything in your sensory room work with external switches. In other words, switches like that. What we're going to show you in this movie is how to operate the Switch 2 radio remote switch control. There's lots of variations. There's this type, which you might have, which is fixed into the wall. There are four channel portable controllers like this. There's also a two channel and a single channel portable controller. Sometimes we're using switches which are attached by cables and sometimes we're using remote controls. So I'm going to cover the range of these but to demonstrate I'm going to show you how to operate this. What I should explain first is that by showing you how to operate this one you will be able then to learn how to use the two channel and how to use the full channel, in fact all of the controllers. Because when you understand how this works, this is identical to this section right there, which is identical to that section right there. So once we know how all of this lot works, you then will be able to use the same knowledge and the same skills to make all of these work. The first thing you need to do is to either switch on the switch controller on the wall if you're in a sensory room or if you're using a portable system then you're going to simply plug it into the wall and switch on the wall socket. You may first of all see a number 4 appear like this, that's just to say it's a switch 4 controller. But then it will show you the channel number. So this one is working on channel number 7, which I'll tell you about a little later on. And you can see that it says channel 7, and it's a happy machine. So if it switches on like that, it's absolutely fine. Then what you'll find is it will go on to the last mode that it was left on. Now in reality, when you do that, it will do that much, much faster. I've slowed this down so we could show you how it actually works. Now the first thing we're going to do is plug in the appliance. One thing to note is that if you're working on a wall mounted system, not a portable, have a look further up the wall. See that says number 8? You'll normally find this adjacent to a shelf and there'll also be a safety harness which you must put around any brackets on equipment. This socket here is connected to this switch system here. And just a little note at this point, remember it might not be number 8, it might be number 1, number 2, number 4, number 7, whatever number is on the switch control, you may find another socket up a bit. In other words, you can use either socket. So you can plug your appliance into there, or you can plug your appliance up the wall into there. In fact, you can have two appliances plugged in, should you want to. And in this particular case, it's an Opti projector. And don't forget, you can plug just about any piece of sensory equipment into these switch systems. Now let's take a switch and plug that into the front of the unit. One unique feature of the Mic Air switch system is that there is a quarter inch socket for switches, which is a big one like that, and you also have a mini jack. A lot of American switches are running on mini jack, so it doesn't matter, you don't need to have jack plug converters, because both sockets are integral in this unit. So with everything plugged in, we're now ready to learn how to use the switching modes, or sometimes we call them the modes of operation. One key thing to remember when you're using a switch system is that the appliance that you're switching must be switched to the on position. So whatever you're going to use, make sure it's switched on. I've taken the wheel out of this projector just so that it's brighter when you can see it's switched on and it's switched off. Right, let's get this working. What we need to do is touch the mode button, which is right there. Now, every time I touch it, you will see that the little LEDs here changes to something different. There, you can see a little bar at the very top, it's next to ready. Press it again, and it says on. Press it again, it goes to latched. And again, momentary and timed. Try this one yourself. Now I want you to touch the mode button until it goes to the latched mode. And we're ready to look at our first 
switch operation. The first mode of operation we're going to look at is latched. This means you press the switch once and it switches the appliance on. You press the switch again and it switches the appliance off. So latched, try it once for on and once for off. Now go from latched by touching the mode button to momentary. Press the switch and hold it down. But you can see I'm keeping my hand on the switch. As soon as I let go, it switches off. As soon as I press the switch and hold it down, it stays on. Now touch the mode button again, just once, and go to timed. This time you'll see the time will actually come up here. And what I'll do, I'll point the projector at the switch system so you can see what happens when we put our timer on. Press the switch and let go and it will stay on for the desired amount of time and then it will switch itself off. A really clever feature with this is if you hold the switch and keep it pressed down or in fact if you just bang the switch the timer will still work so it doesn't matter whether you're holding it down or letting it go the timed mode works anyway. Here are a couple more modes of operation that are worth knowing about. Ready means that the system is powered up and it's ready to go. On. If your appliance is switched on, then this will simply switch it on without using a switch. And lastly, there is computer. Now that does absolutely nothing except when you plug an iPad into it, which is for another video. And in fact, on some of the later models, you will actually see it says iPad and not computer. But don't worry about that for now. So now that we've learned how to use the modes of operation, let's have a look at how we make the switch remote control. In other words, we don't have to plug the switch into the front of the unit. We can plug it into what we call a universal transmitter. To make this thing work radio remote, the first thing you need to do is unplug the switch from the controller and plug it into the universal transmitter. Once again, there's two different size sockets here, so you can use the small switch again. This one is one of the MyCare switches, so let's pop it gently into there. So now my switch is connected directly to the universal transmitter right there. Now if you look closely here you'll see it says SCP07. This means that this transmitter is going to talk to controller number seven. Now you might not be looking at number seven, you may be looking at another number. Now I will clear up the confusion in a minute, but you could have a controller number one, a controller number two, number three, number four, you could have a number five, a number six, a number seven, you might even have a number eight, a number nine, a number ten, and lots of other numbers. What is important at the moment is my appliance is plugged into number seven, so I need my universal transmitter to be talking to switch control point zero seven. So, if I want the universal transmitter, in other words, the switch, to talk to, let's say, for instance, channel number three, all I have to do is go down to this unit and press down to find channel number three, or SCP-03, and then it will talk to channel number three. Once we're up, and it goes to number eight. Again, it goes to number nine. So I basically can change the frequencies of this. So... If I wanted to talk to number seven, then the universal transmitter needs to be up, up to number SCP-07. Then the switch and the transmitter will talk to the radio remote switch control number seven. So it's number seven there, number seven there, they should talk to each other. So now my switch is not actually connected to the wall. It's working with a radio control. In other words, I can wander wherever I want to in the room, and even into the next room probably, uh, to actually control a unit. This means that we don't have cables running across the room, and it makes it a whole lot safer, especially with high equipment. A couple of final things really worth noting about this system. Sometimes some of our 
students and our learners who have autism really love pressing switches. If that's the case, there is a little secret way to lock this whole system. What you do, you can see a little lock icon right there and the mode button that we've been pressing. You basically put one finger on the lock icon, one finger on the mode, two little dots have just appeared and now this thing is totally locked down. In other words, nobody can press any of these buttons. Now, put your finger on the lock icon and your finger on the mode button and it will unlock like that. That's really useful. You can still plug switches into the system and you can use remote transmitters as well whilst the unit is locked. If you're working on one of the bigger controllers and you want to lock the whole thing, then it's quite simple. What you do, one finger on the padlock, one finger on program, and another finger on mode, and now it will lock the whole system. All of these switches on every channel are now locked up. Reverse to unlock it. So, it's program, lock, and mode, and there you go, the little beep tells you that it has reversed the whole thing. So now using the Switch 2 radio remote control, you can control just about anything in your sensory space, be it portable or fixed equipment.